This screencast shows how to do some basic operations in Excel. We'll borrow a bit of analysis from a DC circuit. We'll set up that analysis with cells that use absolute and relative and named references. We'll generate a table of values and plot some of those values. Here's the problem. On the left is a circuit that's somewhat disorganized in appearance. On the right is the cleaner version of that same circuit. And we give you some values of the resistors, R1, R2, R3, etc. What we want to know is what happens as R4, one of those resistors, varies from 10 ohms to 1,000 ohms. We reorganize the diagram a little bit so that it's a little easier to recognize. And then we proceed to simplify. We create equivalent resistances. We find the total current through the system. We find the total current through one of the branches, R234. And from that, we calculate the power in resistor 4 from the current, I234 squared times R4. These three formulas, formulas 1, 2, and 3, are going to be used in the spreadsheet. So we quickly went over the circuit analysis. The point is not to do that detailed analysis here. We presume that we've already done the analysis, and now we want to find out how does the power in resistor 4 vary with the value of the resistance. Changing R4 will change the current flow and therefore change the power dissipation. Here we have a blank Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to set it up in a way that is useful for uh, this particular problem, but also demonstrates what I would say is a recommended way of setting up your spreadsheets. Let's start with the title. When we print this later, we'll be able to know what the analysis was about. So DC circuit. In this area, we're going to create some constants that will be used in the analysis. So R4 is the only resistor that's going to change in this particular example. So all the other resistor values, the voltage, will be specified here. And then down below, we're going to create a table that will have the variation of the equivalent resistance and the power as a function of R4. So let's label this constants. And we'll begin by labeling them uh, with our values, R1, R2, R3, and B sub S. These are the constants for this particular uh, problem. I'm gonna change the alignment the constant values of resistances are 300, 330, 500, and the voltage is 12. So we might as well add units while we're at it. Ohm, 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 and volt. This is strictly not necessary, but we, because we're going to document this for future use, we're going to add the formulas here. This will help us in our in, in the subsequent calculation. So we have a R234 as an equivalent resistance, and that's equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus R4. Now, Excel is going to bark and tell us we have an error because we haven't, de we haven't defined these, these constants. In fact, R2, R3, and R4 are cell references. So if I instead put a single quote at the beginning of this line, Excel is going to interpret it as a string. So now I just have my formula. I can refer to that. R equivalent, similarly, single quote, equals 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R234. I total equals V sub S divided by R E Q I four equals V sub S divided by R two three four and P four is equal to I four squared times R four. This handy reference here will be used later as we enter our formulas. I'll fix the alignment here. Now let's use this region here and create a table. The first column is going to be R4, and the second column is going to be R234. So let's just start with that. R4, the assignment said, varied from 50 to 1,000. 50, 100, 
150. I'll just put these values in and I can use Excel to fill in the rest. So if I have established a pattern here, increasing by 50, if I select these cells and then grab the lower corner, there's a little, little um, square in the corner and my cursor changes from an open plus sign to a closed or filled in plus sign. And I can simply drag down until I get a thousand. So now that I have a column of R4 values, I can enter a formula in this cell that will calculate R234 for an R4 value of 50. So I use this formula here as my guide. In this cell, I type in the formula using Excel cell notation. This is equal to one divided by one over R2. So one divided by, and the value of R2 is in this cell, plus one divided by R3, which is in this cell. The whole thing then is added to R4, which is in this cell to the left. So I have a number 248 with a lot of decimal places. I can hide some of those decimal places to avoid creating the sense that there's more significant digits than really matter. And I can clean up the appearance here by centering these and maybe I'll add some other formatting in a second. As before, uh, if you recall, I generated this column by starting with a pattern and then grabbing this little cursor moving down. So I could try that here and I could grab this cursor and move it down and I get all sorts of weird results. And this introduces the need to uh, consider absolute versus relative cell references. I have this formula and if I click up at the formula bar, I can see the highlighted cells that are in that formula. So one divided by B5 that's R2, one divided by B6, that's R3, and added to that R4. The next cell down, I'll just hit, I can, I can accept this formula by hitting the green check mark. I'll come down here and I see that really what's happened is all my cells have shifted. Uh, A14, row 14, that's the correct value of R4 because that's R that's 100. I want the formula to vary with the value in this column, but I don't want the R2, R2 references to shift every time I copy the formula. Well, I can manually go in. I can grab this and I could put it up here and I could grab this and I can put it up here. That would be one way to fix this formula. Another way to fix this formula would be to start up here and instead of using B5 and B6 in this form, I'll create absolute references. An absolute reference doesn't move when you copy and paste the formula. So if I put a dollar sign B, dollar sign five, dollar sign B, dollar sign six here, and then I grab that formula and I copy it down, I see that the values of R4 are relative, so it keeps calculating R234 using the value to the left or in that column to the left. But the other values of R2 and R3 are fixed. They're unchanged because I've used absolute references when I've copied them down. So that's really what I want. Let's finish um, the copy job here. Just drag this down. And now I have the formulas all for R234. The next column here would be the equivalent resistance. And then later I want to calculate the total current. And then I want to calculate the current through four. And finally, power through four. Now I might as well uh, tidy this up a little bit. What if I make this bold and I center all these values and then I add uh, underline to really set that off. And I've got a couple blank lines here. I'm gonna just delete these two lines so that my formulas pretty much fit. We can use another trick in addition to using these um, absolute references. So the absolute references certainly are fine. If we come in at a later date, just pick uh, any cell here, say at R4 equals 450. It's B5, B6, A19. Um, B5 and B6, we have to visually go back and see B5 is R2. If I click in the cell and then up here, I can add a new name. So I could add R2, but that would cause problems because R2 is already a cell reference in Excel. So I could say res2, and it turns out even res2 is a reserved word in Excel. So I'll do res2 underscore, 
And then down here, I'll name this cell res3 underscore. And I can name this cell. Turns out I can, VS is not a reserved name, so VS here. And while I'm at it, I should add res1 underscore. So now, in this formula here, I can use B5, the absolute reference, or the easier to, to recognize symbol, res2. Similarly, this can become res3. So now, when I copy these formulas down, it's treated as an absolute reference, just as before, res2, res3, but I can read the formula a little bit easier. I can see that A13 is the cell next to me. That is a variable, so I'm going to need to leave that as a variable. So to recap, to take advantage of the copy-paste operations, I need to be mindful of which cells I want to adjust relative to their position. In other words, A11 is always the column to the left, the cell to the left, whereas I don't want the R2, R3 cells to change position when I copy and paste. Let's do this again for R equivalent. So the equivalent resistance is equal to this formula up here, 1 over 1 divided by, and because I have the name res1 already defined, I can simply select it. And now I'm going to need R234. That's this cell next to it, 1 over R234 is this cell, it needs to be a relative reference because I'm going to copy that all the way down this, this column. Excel's not happy with me. I forgot to add. Excel's still not happy with me. I forgot to add the divide here. There we go. And I've got a lot of digits. I'm going to reduce those down to that. Uh, I'm going to work across here and then copy all these formulas down. So I total is equal to V sub S. V, v sub S happens to be named, good, divided by R equivalent, which is this column. And I total uh, has a lot of extra digits. We'll reduce those. I4 is equal to V sub, v sub S divided by R234, that's in this column. Again, it's going to vary. And P4 is equal to I4, the column I just calculated, squared times R4, which is the original column. So I'm going to, this is I4. I'm going to reduce this. And before we go much further, it's also a little confusing what these values are. So I'm going to add units. Ohm. Now I have these formulas. I can select these formulas, drag it down, and I now have a table of values. The next goal is to plot these values. I want to plot how P4, this column, varies with R4. I can select this column and then hold down, depending on the uh, operating system, the uh, control or in the Macintosh, the command key and drag down this column. And now I've made a discontinuous selection. Go to the Insert menu, select Scatter Plot. Always select Scatter Plot. And I can do Scatter Plot with just symbols. This is smooth lines. These smooth lines are um, use a additional mathematical formula, spline, to smooth out the data. I don't really trust that in general. I mean, it's fine for making you feel good about smooth data, but if the data isn't a spline between the points, I'm going to go more conservatively with straight lines. So straight lines between the points. Here's my formula plotted in Excel. Now, when I've selected the plot, the chart design and format tabs are active, and I can go over to the add chart element and add axis titles. So the primary horizontal axis is select in there, command all r4 is in ohm and i can select primary vertical axis and i get p4 in watts i can delete the title here it doesn't really help me understand this so let's say i reduce the number of digits displayed here 
that also changes the number of digits displayed in the, in the axis. So let's recap. We started with an engineering problem, which was evaluate these formulas for a variety of R4 values. R4 is the resistance of this resistor in the circuit. R4 changes the equivalent resistance, which changes the current through that resistor. So P4 depends on the current, which also depends on R4 and on R4 itself. Along the way, we also looked at absolute references. Here's a summary. If the cell label is B4, it's a relative reference, and that means when you copy and paste a formula using that cell, it retains its relative position. Dollar sign B, dollar sign 4 is an absolute reference to both the row and the column. Dollar sign B, no dollar sign 4. Dollar sign B4 is a reference to the column B and variable reference or relative reference to the row 4. B, dollar sign 4, uses the variable column reference B and the absolute row reference 4. In summary, so we create a spreadsheet with a certain layout. We've got a title that'll be helpful if we print this document. At the top, we've created a, a bunch of cells that are constant. What if, for example, I wanted to change the applied voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts? I simply type in, in the constant area and the values of the power change. So I've laid out my uh, spreadsheet so that I can clearly see what the constants are. I've also used absolute references and in fact, I've gone and named additional references, and that allows me to do copy-paste operations very easily.